Well, good afternoon, Toastmasters and guests. Thank you for uh, being here today. I'm going to introduce the podcast um, that I created for this project and then play you a clip from a released episode. I hope that it works. I'm going to put my microphone down to the device that's playing the podcast and then I will end it with an outro as well so we can wrap up the project. So a little background about the podcast. Uh, about 18 months ago, two years ago, Pathways was introduced to the Toastmasters program. And I sneaked ahead and I looked at the future levels and I found that creating a podcast was one of the electives. And I always use this elective to advertise that Pathways is an awesome course to have because you can do fun things like create a podcast and still get credit in the Toastmasters program. Now, I never thought that I would actually create a podcast. I just thought that it was a fun elective. Um, but I told Jasmine about this and she, you know, latched on to it and she said, we should start a podcast. And at the time, we were going to start a podcast called Not Your Average Bucket List. Um, and what this meant was we were going to talk about our bucket list, but it's not like we were going to climb Mount Everest or, or skydive. It was pretty mundane things like organize our house, pick up the violin. Um, and it sounded really interesting, but unfortunately, that podcast never picked up any steam. So fast forward, right now we're at 2020. Um, we're in a global pandemic. Uh, there's police violence in the news again, and social unrest, and there is uh, protests happening around the world, around the country. Um, and there's a global, if not, na or there's a national, if not global, conversation about race. Um, and so we decided um, to go ahead with one of my ideas, which was the Race Isms podcast, um, R A C E I S M S. And in this podcast, we wanted to have cross cultural conversations that would seek healing over division, understanding over ignorance, and a better world overall. Because I think we were both seeing how broken um, the world was and that whenever people engaged in conversations online especially, it was a lot of vitriol, a lot of misunderstanding. And if people would just get together in a room or over a call, maybe we could make a better, we could make the world a better place. So right now I'd like to play for you a clip from episode two, which is titled Impetus to Empathy. So I hope this works. What was the most shocking part of the movie to you, or what did you see or learn through that movie that was like most shocking to your conscience? So there was um, two scenes. Um, one when um, Brian Stevenson was stopped uh, along the road, and you know he was asked to get out of the car, even though he hadn't done anything wrong. Um, the officer patted him down um, and said. I think it says something like, you're lucky this is all that's happening, or, you know, something along those lines. Um, and then to see his face when he got back in the car of, you know, like, like fear, like that something worse could have happened to him. And I was just enraged at that moment because he was driving down the road, minding his own business, and, and this cop stopped him, frisked him for no reason. Um, and then the second scene was when Brian Stevenson was visiting the um, the prison for the first time, and the guard told him that he needed to be strip searched. And Brian said, "You know, counsel doesn't need to be searched." And the guard was like, "Well, you're not getting in here unless you get searched." And just like the invasion of Brian's rights as you know a lawyer as a human like that scene was just really dehuman dehumanizing and you know that th those two scenes really woke me up to just how much this happens and dehumanizes people and how unlawful it is and i guess i thought 
you know, police, law enforcement are there to protect us. And they, these two scenes really brought it home for me that that's not true for for many people, that, that law enforcement is not there to protect them. And, and it really put in, for me, like, perspective of what, like, defunding the police means. Because when I first heard of that, that that movement I was kind of like I kind of paused and I didn't know what to how to react like whoa is this like too much is this too too radical but when I saw those two scenes in the film I was like yeah I understand you know why we give law enforcement too much power and you know Brian was only trying to help and they were trying to stop him from helping and so yeah, those those two things really put perspective put a, put for me at the perspective of what's going on now, and it's not anything that I had really understood or felt before. So, do you think the protests and the social unrest around racial injustice enhanced the reaction you had to the movie? Do you think you would have reacted the same if all this wasn't going on at the same time? You know, that's that's an interesting question, and I honestly don't know, um, because the protests and the, the killings of, you know, black men and women for so many years hasn't affected me personally. Uh, and even before this movie, like, I had intellectually understood that black people were being killed by police or um, terrorized, but I didn't, like, emotionally connect with it because it wasn't, you know, quote-unquote happening to me, happening to my family um, in my neighborhood. So would I have had the same reaction if the current protests weren't going on? I would, I would like to say, I hope I would have, but to be honest, I don't know. Um, that was just a little clip um, of our second episode. Um, and, you know, I titled my talk today, Who Cares? Um, because I want people to care. You know, I care about what's going on in the world. I care about this podcast and hopefully what it's doing and um, getting to know Jaslyn better, getting to know myself better. Uh, so, you know, I invite you all to have a listen. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with podcasts, you can go to our blog and listen directly there. Or you can download an app to your phone. Uh, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, um, all the major platforms. Um, so again, thank you for this time, and hopefully you'll have a listen. I'll end this talk the way we end every episode, which is Jaslyn saying peace and myself saying be safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jaslyn. Uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and especially Lisa, and I also would like to do a shout out for Jaslyn, because although she wasn't the speaker, but she was really part of that podcast. I'm actually extremely moved by this post podcast of yours, and I'm so grateful that you've shared that information with us. And I'm hoping that you would email us a link to it. Maybe, maybe you have, and I've missed it, but this way I can actually listen to them and uh, you know, and learn. Uh, I appreciated, Lisa, very much the way you prefaced your podcast. And uh, this has been really the first time that we share a podcast on our Toastmasters, and it worked beautifully. So I thought it was very nice. We all could hear you, uh, all could listen to what you had to say. And I also think one other thing that's interesting about this talk especially, is that it's probably one of the first times that we speak about social issues in our Toastmasters, because I sense that we generally try to keep away 
from social issues or politics or things which, which you know, we, we tend to only want to talk about things which maybe everyone can discuss without, you know, without affecting people's sensitivities. But I think that this is a topic that we really should talk about. And maybe this is an opportunity for us in the Toastmasters Club to um, provide a safe place to discuss issues which may be too difficult to discuss elsewhere. That's why we have the Toastmasters Club. It's because we can be comfortable talking about whatever it is we wish to talk about in a respectful and uh, listening environment. So, yes. Um, so I enjoyed the format. I enjoyed the heartfelt conversation. Lisa, your voice was very clear and, uh, you know, to the point, as always. I know in this format, you know, you're not standing up and moving around as normal, uh, but still you, you got the point ag across very nicely. If there was one thing that I would have wished maybe to add, was uh, the movie that you mentioned, which I happen to have seen, Just Mercy, so I knew exactly what you were talking about. Maybe I would have wanted you to uh, briefly describe the film and uh, that it's about Brian Stevenson's real life journey into assisting folks which have been unjustly incarcerated uh, so maybe just a bit more about that before you went into the podcast would have been good thing for folks that don't know anything about the film. And that really would be my only recommendation. Thank you so much for the opportunity to evaluate you, Lisa. Best of luck on the podcast. <laughs>